this episode of Grief in Common, we mention suicide, heart attacks and death throughout. Hello and welcome to the Grief in Common podcast by Winston's Wish. I'm Maya. Uh, you might have heard me on a previous episode, I think episode two, with Angus, where we were talking about how grief is taboo sometimes. I'm joined with Ang Harad today and we're going to be covering topics surrounding changes in relationships. So whether that be friends or romantic relationships or family members, any kind of relationships and our experiences around that. You might have heard my story on a previous episode, but just to give a brief overview, I'm Maya and my dad took his own life when I was five years old. Um, so many years ago now, I'm now 23, nearly 24. Um, but the grief still affects me. Um, so Anhara, do you want to just tell me a little bit about your story and your experience with grief? Yeah. So hi, I'm Anhara. And when I was 14 years old, I lost my dad to a sudden heart attack. I'm now 19, about to be 20 in a couple of weeks. So you say you lost your dad quite suddenly. So, I mean, you were in your teens, right? When that happened. Yeah. How did you find that that affected you losing someone at that kind of age? It was quite a big shock for me. Um, I was on a plane about to take off when I found out and I was with my mum about to go on holiday. Um, so immediately there was a shift between me and my mum that we knew we had to stick together. There's a point, I think, for most teenagers where their relationship with their parents is a bit more rocky as you're growing up, you're changing. Yeah, there was a big change in our relationship or shift Um, at that point um, because we knew that we had to stick together um, in that moment because we we were all we had as our support system at that moment in time. And that, that, that change has stayed ever since, which is really nice. But finding out at 14, you're in secondary school, you're thinking about exams in the next couple of years. Um, and it's quite difficult to go back into the situation of school um, with a lot of people around you who are aware of the situation. Yeah. Um, so that was very difficult, especially as it happened in the summer holidays. So I had about five weeks before I went back to school. I remember walking back in and just everyone looking at me as that's the guy whose dad's died over the summer. Oh, bless you. I know, I felt, I think I feel lucky in some ways that I'm like, it sounds awful, but I lost my dad when I was so much younger. I mean, you know, it's the kind of thing of like, how many memories do you really have when you're five years old? Yeah. I'm like, I know it must have been horrible at the time. And I do kind of remember the day that it happened on. And I remember that, so it was, my dad died and it was me, my mum, my brother, my twin brother. And I remember us being like a big unit on that day because my mum kind of came out and told us and we all just had this really tight hug. But in terms of school and friends and stuff like that, I feel like it became normalised quite quickly because five-year-olds just aren't like tuned into that kind of thing. They're kind of like, oh, your parents died. Okay, do you want to play with like sandcastles? <laughs> Yeah. So I feel like I didn't really have to deal with that kind of stuff, which I think was almost a blessing in disguise. I think it was it was probably coming out in more kind of subconscious ways of me and my brother. Like we probably needed like a lot of quiet time and things like that away from the other kids. But in terms of their reaction, it wouldn't have been quite as stark. Whereas like I can't even really imagine if it had happened when I was at secondary school and you would just be kind of so much more aware of it. Because, I mean, did you feel like it changed or affected your relationships with your friends at the time? My friends were a great support. Um, the day that it happened, they came up to where I was, as I was staying with a family friend, um, and they just stayed with me whenever I needed them. And it wasn't necessarily talking about my dad. They were just there for me, and nothing's changed since. They are still my best friends. Um, but in terms of some more distant friends I definitely think that I lost them because in my eyes I learned the people to cut off I learned that life's too short 
um, to be friends with people who don't make you feel good. And that definitely helped with the start of my process. Yeah, that makes sense. When I was at primary school, it was sort of like, because me and my brother were in reception when my dad died. Everyone kind of knew about it, I think. Um, I mean, I'm pretty sure they did. Oh, like, it kind of would have been hard not to, you know what I mean? And, like, yeah. you know, when you were that age, you had, like, loads of friends that, like, kind of come around for tea and things like that. So the friends that we had that did that a lot would have obviously known. But I think kids just don't care as much at that age. For me, it was more like when you get older and then you kind of have to tell people, yeah. like, new friends. And then it becomes a bit more tricky because it just feels so awkward. I think for me it was like university where you're kind of starting completely from scratch and you have to tell people because people will say things like, oh, you know, what do your parents do and stuff like that. And I just find it really awkward. I don't know if you've ever experienced that or not, that kind of yeah. thing with like new friends that you've made since that happened. Yeah, definitely. Um, I went to uni last September, um, so for my first year. And I definitely found the same thing with meeting new people um, and just having to explain kind of the situation. And especially as grief can hit you so hard at some times, there are times that you aren't going to want to go out um, or, you know, meet up, that kind of thing. Um, I think that can be quite difficult for some people to understand why you don't want to be quite so involved sometimes there are times that you do and there are times where you just want to curl up and do something for yourself so i think i agree it was very difficult going to uni and just having to explain yeah no absolutely and i think like the culture of uni as well where like you know not for everyone of course but like so much of it is centered around like kind of going out and stuff like that and if you're having a day where you are just missing that person that you've lost or, you know, it's an anniversary that a lot of people might not know about. I mean, and, you know, it depends on who you're friends with, I guess, but some people can kind of be of that, oh, you know, why are you not going out? Why are you not doing this? And it can feel really horrible because you don't always want to have to justify it either. Like, if you're feeling a bit down one day, like, you don't want to have to explain exactly why because it's then the thing of making it uncomfortable. But yeah, it can be tricky in that kind of situation. So I don't know if you have many siblings or any siblings or... Yeah, I have a half-brother from my dad's side. So I don't know whether you felt or if you experienced any changes in your relationship with him when your dad died and how that's kind of affected you. Yeah, definitely. So when I found out that my dad died and I was in the airport, um, we knew that we had to tell my brother, obviously, because no one had told him yet. And I was very adamant that I was going to be the one to do it. I said, he's my brother, it's our dad, and I feel it really strongly that I need to be the one to tell him. So I rung him, and he was actually in a lecture at the time. So I just said, you need you need to come out, because um, I've got to talk to you. So he did. Um and I told him and he just said, where are you going? I'm leaving now. I'm coming down to you. I love you. We'll be okay. And that's exactly what he did. He came down from Coventry um, and he stayed with me for as long as I needed. And even now, whenever I need, um, I can ring him, I can text him, go and see him. And he's just had a little boy and I feel like that's really lovely. I feel like it's a gift from my dad for us. And it's just really lovely that we're all so close now. Yeah. So so he was an older sibling then? Yeah. So he's in his 30s. So he is quite a bit older than me. Do you feel like in a way then it like it almost brought you closer somehow? I didn't grow up with him. Um, we lived in a completely different place. So I didn't even know that I had a brother until I was about three. That's when I met him. Okay. But I remember about 10 or 11 going to stay with him because um, I think he really wanted that bond as well and it only got stronger um, after Dad died. Yeah. That's so sweet. Yeah. 
Yeah, because I mean, so me and my brother are twins. And it's funny, like, I don't know if it's because we lost my dad when we were so young, but I feel like it's affected our relationship in so many ways. Like, it's really gone very up and down. I don't think it's even closeness. I think it's more how much we worry about each other. There's a mutual understanding. Yeah, I think we're both so aware of what the other one has, like, been through that I think the older you get, like the more concerned you get about that person because you kind of realise not to be depressing, but, like, the world can be a bit, like, rubbish sometimes. So, like, I don't, I think when it immediately happened, you know, you're kind of five, like, that kind of sibling relationship is a bit different. I think we were probably just as normal as we always were. There are a few, like, points that I can pick out from when we were probably, like, nine or ten where... Like, something would happen between us. Like, say we'd have a fight or something. And I would be really upset and I'd go to my room. But then he'd come and knock on the door. And, like, it was quite adult the way we would deal with it. He would be like, I'm really sorry, I shouldn't have done that. And we'd have a big hug. And I remember it making me feel really emotional because it's hard to explain. But we were just very, like, open around each other, I think. But the way that we dealt with our grief was really different. Because when we were younger, he was... A lot more open I think with his emotions I was a lot more closed off I wouldn't go and visit my dad's grave or anything if him and my mum would go I would just sit in the car so we kind of were quite opposite and then as I got older well as we both got older we had our own issues as all teenagers do like I had a lot of problems with like anxiety and things like that he had some really down periods every time something was up with the other one we would just worry so much. But I think when you're a teenager, you're less like, you feel a bit less able to chat about those things. And I definitely was really aware of like, not wanting to say anything that would upset him. And I think he probably felt the same. And so there was a point where just, we weren't really talking about that kind of thing anymore. And it was only really last year, I would say, but we did start opening up with each other a little bit more and we had like, it was a big conversation, but it was over text. But I think, you know, as long as the conversation is being had, we did just kind of open up to each other a bit. And we sort of said, like, if you're ever struggling with stuff to do with dad, like, nobody understands better than the other one because we've both been through it. So I don't know what your experience is in terms of, like, romantic relationships, that kind of thing, and how you feel like what's happened to you or like your grief journey has kind of affected that because I know it's affected me (laughs) yeah definitely um my past relationships have been affected quite a lot by my grief um the person I was with around the time he left me because I was too emotional because of my dad um and I think that was quite difficult to process um because I didn't imagine yeah, I didn't. I couldn't do anything about it. It wasn't me. It wasn't me trying to be emotional. That was just how I was. I think it's quite difficult when that person that you're with doesn't understand, and they don't understand why you have these sudden switches. That the person that I'm with now, who is wonderful, has also lost his dad. So we have a very deep connection on understanding each other, even though two different circumstances two different forms of death we still understand each other much better which is really really lovely Um, and I think it's made our relationship so much stronger because I was so worried about having to tell him and then when I did he just went mine's dead too and (laughs) I think we both just laughed because (laughs) it's such a big thing that you have to tell each other and we realized that we're both in the same situation Did it feel like a bit of a weight off your shoulders? Like, you must have known that he would, you know, understand at least some of what you would go through. Some people will kind of probe you and want to know what they can do. When often, there really isn't anything they can do. Sometimes it's just sitting next to you, maybe putting your film on, asking you to get you some food or something. But they're never going to be able to fix the real reason why you're sad in that situation and... That's something that I think is difficult for people around you to accept because when they love you, they want to help you. 
I mean, I hope I understand what we're saying, but like, I think I get it sometimes where like I would literally cry for no reason. Yeah. It genuinely is no reason. So like, even for me, it's confusing, but I'm just like, I know I'm sad and I know I need to cry right now. And they'll kind of be like, what's wrong? What's wrong? You know, like, what can I do? And it's so hard to put it into words because like, there actually isn't anything specific that I could pin it on. Like, I couldn't even say like, oh, you know, it's because my dad died. Because at the time it doesn't even really feel like that. But yeah, it's that thing of when people ask you what's wrong, you have to like pin something to it. And it's not always that easy to do it. No, definitely. That That's exactly what I'm thinking about. And you just don't want, you don't want a solution. Basically, you just want them there. Yeah. I think in situations like that, like sometimes I just want to be left to be sad. Like, I think something really good that I heard was asking someone if they want comfort or solutions. And if they say comfort, you just be there. If they say solutions, then feel free to suggest. But I think asking that question can, in your if you're in that situation or anything like that, I think that's really nice. That's it's... a really good phrase, actually. Yeah, I really like yeah. that. I have like sad playlists on Spotify, or I have like specific films where if I'm in a certain mood, sometimes I just want to watch that because I know it's going to make me cry. Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes you just know you need to let it out, and it's like it doesn't always mean that something awful is wrong or that I want to talk about anything. I just need to kind of let things go a bit. Yeah. Like, in the relationships that you've been in before, I know you've mentioned your ex from before, like, I've always found it hard to kind of not make the person that I'm with, like, my kind of rock, as in, I think that can be good sometimes, but there's a thing of being too dependent on people, right? And I feel like I often struggle with that. And it is probably, I mean, I'm sure it's to do with what's happened to my dad, but I think it's just... Having that person there, knowing that they're going to be there. But there's that added thing of a relationship where you don't always really know if that person is going to be there for, you know, however long. And I think that's something that I really struggle with. I don't know if you've ever had the same kind of thing. Yeah, there's always that fear of losing more people. And even though in teens it's perfectly natural to have friends, relationships, all of that kind of thing come and go. I think for me, there's always been an underlying fear of losing people because of my dad dying so suddenly. Um, and that underlying fear led to quite severe OCD um, and things like that. And most of my rituals that I would do because of my OCD were based around not losing people and wanting things not to change. Um, but luckily, I am much better now and... I put less pressure on myself to be responsible and understand a lot more that it's normal for things to come and go. Yeah, absolutely. And that, like, that's such a big thing to come to terms with as well. Like when you've lost someone in the way that we both have, because I mean, you know, although my dad knew he was going to do it, I did not know he was going to do it. <laughs> so it was yeah. kind of just as much of a shock. Um, and yeah, it's really hard to get out of that mindset that the same thing won't happen to other people around you. And like, for me, it was always, it was mainly to do with cars and stuff. Like if I knew that people I cared about were going to be making like, I can't even say long car journeys because it was really any kind of car journey that didn't involve me. And it's like really draining because you can't, it's so like all consuming and people don't really understand. Like you can't think about anything else until you know that they're okay. And I had a similar, I mean, I don't think mine was ever OCD, but it's that thing where you kind of want to get some kind of control over your life. Like my mum always told me, even when I was much younger, I would get like my swimming kit for school ready like a week in advance, just so that I knew it was done and I didn't need to think about it. And I was in control of that. I wasn't going to, you know, forget or anything like that. It's just interesting the similar experiences that people have with that kind of stuff. I think one thing with me as well with relationships, and I'm probably really outing myself here to anybody that's listening to this, but I think for me, because I think because of the way my dad left, like, you know, took his own life, I 
because I always think that's going to happen again. I do a thing of like, I kind of push that person away because I'm like, you know, if they really want to stay, then they will show me that they want to stay. Like if I, you know, push them away enough, then they'll just come back. And obviously that backfires a lot because like, that's not nice to be treated that way. <laughs> you know, if somebody's always pushing you away, especially like, you know, I'm not like married with kids or anything. Like I'm still relatively young. If you're in a relationship like that, you're not going to stick around and deal with it. I guess just like the way you are in relationships that, I mean, I think personally, I wouldn't be like if it wasn't for what happened with my dad. And I don't know if there's anything like that with you where you're like, I think if what happened hadn't happened, I probably wouldn't act that way the way I do. I don't know. Yeah, so I'm, I think it was mainly when I was quite unwell um, mentally that I think it made it difficult for people to be with me um, because I didn't even understand my own brain and what was going on. I didn't actually get an OCD diagnosis until I was about 18. So that's four years of struggling, not really knowing why I was the way that I was or did what I did. So I think if I didn't understand myself, no one else was ever going to be able to understand me. Yeah, I think that's such a good point as well, because like what's happened doesn't stop you wanting to be with somebody. But in some ways it does make it harder because it's like you say, when you don't know what's going on in your own head, you don't know how you're going to act when you're with somebody in that way and yeah. it make it so tricky and I'm really sorry that you went through that for four years so I know in terms of like friends and everything I think definitely for me when I well I think when I was going through all school of uni there wasn't really any friends that I had that had been through a similar thing or understood what I was going through in any kind of way but when me and my brother were younger, we actually, we went on a Winston's Wish bereavement camp. And it was amazing because it was, it was like a, a suicide specific one. So it was like really tailored to what we'd been through specifically. And it was great because there were, there were a load of kids there. I don't know how many there were, but you know, like a decent amount of kids, but they'd split them into like age groups and stuff. And it was kids exactly our age that had lost a parent in the exact same way. And there were there were a pair of siblings in particular that we made friends with, me and my brother, and they were obviously siblings as well. And we didn't know, but my my mum was off in like the parent camp and she'd actually made friends with their mum. So it all it all kind of fit together. But um yeah, we were just hanging out with these siblings. Um, you know, I've still still got them on social media now. Um, and we we went on quite a few family holidays, like all of us, like after the camp. And, you know, as much as you're, you're just a kid at that age and, you know, there was activities like petting these huge dogs and like throwing clay at a big top wall and like as much of that as that is like super fun when you're a kid, I think it was just nice having kids around you that just completely understood what you were going through because it's, I mean, there wasn't anybody like that at school. And I think that's really rare to find. I don't know if, if you had any kind of friends or any experiences like that where you felt like you could speak to people that understood what you were going through. Yeah, definitely. Um, I knew other people in my school that were also bereaved and I was under some other charities when it first happened that were local to where I lived. Um, and then on a bit more of a wider scale, widowed and young, over COVID, um, we all had a really, really big group chat and would speak a lot. And I made quite a few friends through that, which was really lovely. And I don't really speak to them anymore. The kind of big group chats and things fizzled out as like we moved past COVID where we're all stuck in the house. But I still, like you, have them all on social media. And sometimes when I share something from Winston's Wish or anything that I find that's really good about bereavement, even if they like the story, there's still that connection between you. And I've definitely had lots of really good conversations with people who I might not even have conversation with ever again or haven't heard from them since. But even then, it's really lovely just to find connections with people that can understand you. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I think you're right. Like, and it's the same kind of thing with me where, you know, the, you know, the people that we made friends with at that camp, I don't think either of us really speak to kind of on a daily basis anymore or like even relatively frequently. But I know that, you know, if the worst came to worst, I was feeling really rubbish about something. If I, if I messaged them, they would understand. I think a common thing, especially with people that have lost a parent in particular, is the situation of the parent that is left finding somebody new and, you know, the feelings and emotions surrounding that. I don't know if you've had any experiences with that at all and how you found it. Yeah, I have. So before my dad died, my parents were planning on getting a divorce. Um, so after he died, my mum was hurting a lot, but I, she was ready quite a bit sooner to find a different relationship um, because she was about to not be in one before my dad died. So even though she was hurting and she was grieving with me, she did get into a new relationship. For me, I thought it was quite quick. But if I kind of look at her circumstances and understand it from her point of view now, it's probably not as fast as I thought it was. Um, and they are still together now and he's really, really lovely. But I think the best thing is that he never expects to be my dad. He would never parent me. He just wants to be there for me and in our family, which he absolutely is. Um, but without replacing my dad because I don't want him replaced and he doesn't want to be that person. So we have a very good mutual understanding there. We spent a lot of time together through the lockdowns as my mum was a nurse. Um, so that was really nice. But they've been together about four and a bit years now. So it's, it's really nice. Um, yeah, that's great to hear. I'm, I'm happy for her that she's got someone that makes her happy. Yeah, and I can see how, you know, like, in your eyes, it would be easy to see as it's, you know, happened quickly and everything. Like, you know, of course you're going to feel like that. Like, that's your dad. And, you know, when you're not someone that's in the relationship relationship and you're the child in the relationship, it's, you know, it must have been really difficult for you. But I'm, yeah, I'm really happy that they're, you know, doing well and everything. So yeah. did you ever, did you struggle with those feelings of, at the beginning, kind of worrying that he would try and kind of encroach a bit and try to be like more of a father figure to you? Um, I don't think I was too worried. Um, He's come from a past of bereavement as well. So he came into this, into the relationship with my mum, knowing that she had a child um, it lost her dad. I think all I said was I just don't want him to treat me like I'm his child. Because I set that very clear boundary very early on. I don't think knowing him, I don't think he ever would have done it anyway. But I'm glad that I just spoke to my mum and said that straight away. And I think if there's anyone listening um, who's in a similar situation, it's definitely good to have that conversation. Let them understand how you're feeling because from their point of view, they don't want to upset you as much as you don't want to upset them. So if you're in a place where you feel able to, I think it's really good to just set some boundaries um, for yourself. Yeah, that's really brave of you as well because it can be so tricky having conversations like that with a parent especially when, you know, they're sort of the only parent that you've got left. It can be so tricky to not say things that you think are going to upset them and things like that. But, you know, when it's a boundary yeah. that you know is going to be really important for you, that's, yeah, it's amazing that you felt able to say that. Yeah, thank you. For me, my experience has been probably the stark opposite to that. <laughs> because, I mean, so we, we lost my dad super young and my mum wasn't with anybody for... Oh God, like 17 years at least after he died. I think because we were so young, she was like just pouring all her energy into making sure that we were okay. You know, that's that's still so young. Like we've got all of our school lives basically to get through. 
and there were two of us going through the same things at the same time. It's not like there was one that was older that would be kind of less of a concern, you know, or anything like that. We were going through the same things at the same time. Our, you know, tough periods were like this, you know, if one was okay, the other one might not be. So I think it was like, it was 100% like a full-time job for her, trying to make sure that we just got to, you know, like 18 in one piece. And even then, it's only been in the last, I don't know, six or seven months that she's like found somebody and you know it's like seems pretty happy with him and we've met him which is like how I know that it's like a proper thing <laughs> yeah. because we've never met anybody before I mean like I don't think there even was anybody to meet for most of the time but what do I know she could have been you know yeah that's how I know that you know this is somebody that she really likes I wasn't really sure how I would feel about it because it's been so long just the three of us I kind of like, it sounds stupid, but I kind of didn't even... I kind of forgot that could even be a possibility of, you know, her being with someone else. I think it's just nice knowing that she's got somebody looking after her. I think that's the main thing, because when you're a kid, you're quite wrapped up in yourself. Like, you just want to make sure that you're OK. And then, you know, moving away, going to university, I think I got... I started worrying more about her. And like now it's just nice knowing that now we've both flown the nest, she's got somebody there that's looking after her. I think the only thing that was that threw me off a little bit was so he's somebody that has kids and they're they're not mine and my brother's age. They're like they're not old, they're kind of mid teens. But um I don't know, like even even though I'm like twenty three, I was like, Oh no, what if she what if she like prefers these new kids to me? Which is so ridiculous. But like I don't know, I've just never had to deal with this before, with her being with somebody else. And I know that that's just ridiculous and it's not going to be the case, but it is weird navigating, like, new relationships like that. Even, my like, my most conscious memory, it's just been the three of us. So it's not even like I, re I really have many memories of her being with my dad, which I imagine must be quite different to you. So yeah. it's not like he's stepping on any toes in any way because I've not got those memories of them together to feel, you know, that he's stepping on in any way. But, yeah, it seems it seems so irrational to be bothered by something like that. But it's all fine now, and I'm happy for them. And, yeah, it's just nice knowing that she's being looked after. I just want to thank you and Harad for speaking with me today. It's been amazing and really interesting listening to your experiences and your story. I think it's, it's so interesting how we can have such similar circumstances in terms of we've both lost a dad, we've both got a brother, but yeah, our experiences with that are so different. Um, and it's been super interesting listening to you. So thank you so much for being so open and chatting with me today. Thank you very much, I've really enjoyed it. Grief in Common is a podcast run by the Winston's Wish Youth team. The topics of conversation aim to provide comfort and make a difference to other young grieving people over the age of 13. We hope to give listeners the confidence to talk about their own grief journey. It's rare to be able to listen to other young people being open and honest about their grief and how they're feeling. We hope this podcast reaches young grieving people everywhere and helps them to feel less alone. From teenagers to young adults, students to professionals, we're all different, but we've all got grief in common. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. Thank you. Thank you.